So basically what we want to do is to have a cube um, emitting to the particles and then transitioning into the monkeys. So what we need to do is very simple, we break the cubes and I'm going to use a preset which is called a fill volume. Uh, do you see there are multiple kind of reasons to use this particular node. Uh, one reason is that I need the particles. Another reason I would like to add some depth when I'm uh, deleting this geometry. So here let's take a delete geometry. And uh, it does not really matter which part you delete. Probably I will delete with faces, which I think is kind of easier to deal with. Uh, another thing I'm probably going to subdivide is quite a lot, maybe four. And then finally take a directional fold so that there is a differentiation within the selection of what, how, uh, what part do I really delete. And in directional fold, always put a position. Uh, as a way to evaluate and select the object. So with the fourth, we create a boolean, and now we slide, and we can see we're deleting the cubes. And here is a one very important part I want you to notice. It may not be very obvious, but if you try to take a solidify, then you can see there's a inner feeling of the cube. And this is the whole point of this field geometry nodes. And you can take the negative one so that you can, you can increase how much it feels. And then you can increase the cut so that you feel more. So this is kind of procedural. I'm going to plug this maximum displacement to the original socket so that the whole point is that we want to reuse this setup for the monkey so that we do not build another new tree. And we can also synchronize the effects so that we need for some settings to be specific for the object and not shared across the node tree. Then we need to use these kind of group inputs so that everything has been exposed in the modifier panel. Next step is basically to produce particles. Uh, just to know, on one side, this is this is kind of very boring animation at this moment. Like it's kind of straight cut. So here, instead of using the 100% the position, we can take the vector noise. So that's to add some noise on the top of it. Uh, let's take the factor to be one, and immediately you can see these kind of noises. And uh, due to the limitation of the geometry that we haven't subdivided enough, it's kind of a little bit boring. So you can increase the amount, but it can also delay your machine very much. So you need to be able to really manage the balance between this count and uh, subdivision. Or sometimes if you do not worry about this at all, then it's really just a hollow cube which I personally do not really like, so that I want to keep it like a 6 or actually 10. Okay, then we have some depth. It depends on what you finally do. And I take that to 0.5. Uh, probably too much. 0 0.2. 0 0.15. Yeah, this looks kind of better. So the whole point is just to give us some depth. Okay, so that it's not just a, a thin cube or whatever. Okay, next step is just to instance all this kind of a, uh, points within the volume. So the reason we create these faces, or as a side effect, we can also do this kind of function. Note that there, this is not the only way to instance points within a volume. Uh, some people made a uh, made use of recast the node as a group node and the instance point within volume. That's another story which I'm not going to discuss. Okay. Um, I have these points. And I think it's kind of good to have these points already. So you can increase the density. Like 100, then you refill really the volume. So here, well, let's join geometry with both mesh and the particles. And I'm going to take a point instance because points by themselves has no real geometry. 
So we need to at least instance something. In this case, I'm going to instance a UV sphere. Surprisingly, a UV sphere, uh, when it's set to segment three rings two, you get actually five vertices at the maximum. It's actually five vertices. However, if you're attacking a cube, then you have eight vertices, which is essentially heavy compared to the UV sphere. So if you're trying to make a particle system, I would recommend to instance UV sphere. And we can use the same directional fault to eliminate uh, the other half of the instances so that we do not see them. So let's take a map range. Actually, map range is too dumb. Let's use the color ramp so that we can have more kind of detail control. So plug the color into scale. Then we can see how things has been changed. Let's take the white. So that's, yes. Another thing we can do is I've added an offsets options within the vector related to vector. So sometimes you want to use the nearly the same directional fold, but if you would like to offset just a little bit of the evaluation, then you can use this offset socket. So the use of that is basically that if we plug the fold into factor. Currently, by combine vector, uh, combine x, y, z, and move the offset a little bit, then you can trigger the animation a little bit earlier than the other parts, while keeping the most of values the same. Because the other value essentially is, does not really have any kind of major difference in this case. And so this is also a way to think about it. Okay. Once we have done that, let's uh, deal with the flying of particles. It's very simple. You just take the set position for our points. And then let's add some noises. So assume our noises in these sockets. Then we need to scale the noises. So initially there is no noise, then we add up the noise and take that to offset. Okay, the noise is I'm going to use, actually always use vector wiggle because this is something that we can evolute. I'm going to take the position into the vector and then in evaluate that then our particle is flying. So this is the way to think. Okay, for the scale, I'm going to take the di uh, directional fold. And finally, I'm, uh, there is one more thing. I'm going to ink reverse the relationship between. Here, I'm going to take the offset to the offset direction. Okay, fine. So now as the cube disappears, our particles has been appeared. If we take the object info to load the information of our empty, let's change our empty into the arrow mode so that we can see X, Y, Z, and then use the location as a evolute 3D. So as our empty move, the noises or the particles move as well. Here we can increase the scale of the vector wiggle, like use the negative because I do not want to deal with the maximum and minimum individually. So I rather use a single value to deal with that. So now we're actually breaking up the values. Okay, fine. So we can keyframe this single 
so we can see the park. Uh, let's visualize it better. So if you want to put a, mod, uh, a material on all these kind of instances, you cannot really plug material. For example, I add a emission shaders, and you can see they do not really emit the light as supposed, especially for the particle system. Here, in this case, we need to always use the set material. And I'm going to add another material socket. Because you cannot create materials within this red socket. So here I'm going to create a, another emission shader. This time it emits a light. light. And the other, let's uh, set material and use the red. Here, in self emission, I'll probably add a principal shader and set the type into the orange for the moment. Okay, so we have this particle systems, which is okay. And the last thing we need to do with the particle system. Actually, is to make it disappear. So initially our particle system is kind of disappearing, there is no size because of its zero. But then everything becomes large once our fault is covering these particles. But I want it to go back to nothing, which is zero. So now this is how it works. So this is kind of a disappearance effect. But it's definitely possible that you make a review effect just by reversing all this kind of animation. And this is what we are going to do. Here I'm going to just change the color ramp a little bit. Okay. So then we reverse this animation with the Suzanne monkey. Basically, just the first we create a Suzanne monkey, which is the top priority. So we have a cube, we have a Suzanne, which is okay. And uh, just to take uh, all the kind of uh, important stuff that you need. So that our Suzanne monkey is not affecting our setup with the cube. So here I think I'm going to take this combine XYZ. And then, actually, the issue of this combine XYZ is I need to take a negative. So I do not need this combine XYZ for real, but I just need a Boolean input. A Boolean mass vector mass and take this to scale. And uh, map range to Boolean mass. Boolean is usually being interpreted, interpreted as 0 to 1. So 0 to 1, and I'm going to remap that to maybe, what's the number right now? Yes, it's 1. So 1 is positive, then 0 is negative. This is what I want. Or actually, you can use this switch. Oh, but no, but uh, probably no. Okay, so this is fine. I think... Uh, and we want like to put all our CD back into the socket so that they do not really follow 100% the same particle system. Although if they are the same particle system, it might be very interesting, but otherwise I probably don't really want. Okay. Uh, subdivision might also be important because the cube it requires a lot of subdivision. The monkey may not need to. Okay, so I think mostly are good. Uh, there's also a seed that we can take from the vector noise. Uh, I think it's already there. So I think for cube, this is it. So let's take a Susan monkey, but uh, it might freeze our computer, so you always need to save your file first. And then we, because they cannot directly select the 
DDD geometry nodes. It does not add geometry nodes modifier. So you have to create a new geometry nodes, just whatever geometry, and then select the geometry nodes. And your computer will freeze because you're instancing a lot of Suzanne monkeys. And this is what we get. Fortunately, it does not really crush uh, very much. So let's first thing that is to decrease the subdivision level because the first Zen monkey it really does not need to be so much. Another important thing is we do not need uh, this displacement values. So let's take a 0 0.5 first. Okay, 0 0.5 is also having flaws. So even smaller, negative 0.2. In fact, this is kind of a similar kind of extrusion effect, which means if you think about that, the extrusion is always kind of very bad, right? Uh, especially it's along with the normal, and the Suzan monkey is not very good at being extruded. Anyway, uh, there are some interesting parts that we need to realize. Is for the Suzan monkeys. Uh, I do not know why, but it's x, y, z is being set to zero. So it's already reversing all the actions that we need initially. That's why if we just play around with these controls, you can see there is a transition from monkeys into the queue. Here we probably just try to change a little bit the settings. Uh, maybe we can increase the size of controller so that the transition becomes softer. Uh, actually, it does not really matter probably. So at the end, this is this is something that you have to tweak by yourself, I guess. But these are the principles. It's actually pretty easy with all these sound presets. There aren't many nodes because I've made everything into presets. 